Good morning. Welcome back to my channel. Good morning, Bowie. Bowie. Good morning. Say good morning. <laughs> so today I am going to film a what I eat in a day. Plus, I'm I want to. Sure, I understand. Siri, give it a rest. <laughs> I'm gonna take you guys along for what I eat in a day. I also wanted to film a sit down chat later this morning about something, a um, bit like of a story time, about something that I think is important and I've wanted to film for a long time. So I'm gonna do that today and include that in today's video. So Alex and I are actually about to go for a run. It's our long run day. It was meant to be yesterday, but we we're away. So it's Monday, it's about 8.30. And we're just waiting on Nin Nin to get here, to look after Bowie. And then, yeah, we're gonna go for our long run, 12 kilometers today. Let's do this. Let's do a recap of that run, Bowie. Fast first six, running with wind on our backs. Felt so good, except it was so hot. It's, it's winter, but it's not really. Turn around, headwind in the sun. Pace slowed down massively and realized that's why it felt so easy. You really just want to put that lens cap on, don't you? I'm making all sweaty. You don't want to be all sweaty, trust me. Got myself some breakfast. Not this. <laughs> Let's chat. I feel like this topic has been something that I've been wanting to chat about on YouTube for a very long time and just never found, I guess, the right time or words. I should probably clarify what I'm talking about here. Um, but I opened up my Instagram like maybe two years ago now. I think I was pregnant with Bowie at the time. But I basically opened up about previously suffering from, I'd call it orthorexia, um, which is a condition where basically you're so obsessed with being healthy that it becomes unhealthy, like an unhealthy addiction or obsession. And that was few years ago now probably around 2016 to 2018 but yeah i just wanted to like chat about it again because i feel like i sort of like did a post about it or talked about it in my stories that one time and then i kind of just like went silent about it um and i guess it's like a hard topic to talk about but it is so common and also i should probably clarify trigger warning because um yeah some of this content may be triggering for people i swear it's just like it's such a common issue like I don't know if I know one girl who doesn't in some way, shape or form or at some point in their lives haven't suffered from some sort of form of body dysmorphia or anorexia, orthorexia, bulimia, all those kinds of things. So anyway, I just wanted this platform slash my um, channel to be a safe open space. I'm such an open book so if any if you have any questions you can always come to me and ask any questions i feel like only now because of where i am with things i'm able to be open about this because it took me many years to i guess admit it to myself or even like admit it to my friends and family um, but i'm in such a comfortable place now that i can reflect back on where i was to where i am now and all i can say is i'm just so much happier let's do a little break i'm gonna go see if my coffee's ready on my food don't want to miss that so i got an avo toast from um what's it called third base and this looks like it's going to be really hard to eat anyway yum and then i also got a iced coffee and the juice anyway i'm not liking where i'm sitting so i'm going to turn the car around so if you are someone who is going through something a battle similar to this just want you to know that i feel like it's a lifelong battle that requires constant work and progress there is no easy or quick solution or fix but just know that i'm here fighting that battle with you guys and we'll get through this and yeah just know that it gets better times get better so if you're in the thick of it maybe this video will help or maybe it's not the right time for you so if it isn't i'm not offended if you guys want to um, jump off this video and not watch because talking about eating disorders can be triggering for some people I even feel like saying that word like eating disorder feels a bit taboo but you know whatever I'm really trying to eat this here so let's do a little bit of a story time so I feel like for me the height or peak of it was 2016 no sorry I reckon 2017 I was so into my Instagram account and creating healthy foods studying nutrition at university being really fit 
And I feel like it was in the age of, like, girls on Instagram just drinking, like, 20 banana smoothies a day. You know, that was health. And raw veganism was so popular. And I feel like that's where things... I guess really triggered for me or escalated for me without saying numbers I was the lowest weight I ever was but the unhappiest I'd ever been I had no energy and I feel like I was just mentally very exhausted from just over analyzing everything counting every calorie feeling guilty and laying in bed and like going through what I'd eaten for the day and feeling guilty or counting it up or it's just the constant like I guess mental over analyzing everything that's just it's just draining and um, I didn't enjoy food and I didn't enjoy life because you know I didn't go and eat ice cream with my friends or I hated going out for meals because I couldn't control what was in the meal um, I didn't enjoy going to social events because I felt pressured to eat things that weren't unhealthy I never ate anything like I wouldn't even eat a hot chip that's how over obsessed with being healthy I was if you guys watch my channel regularly now love a hot chippy and I feel like I was just in denial of actually enjoying all kinds of foods because I'd tell myself or tell my friends like oh I just don't like enjoy that kind of food like I love eating healthy I think if you're that obsessed with eating healthy that's not healthy and I feel like this has become a really popular thing now is not demonizing foods as good and bad and I think that's great because it's true I don't think foods are good and bad I think some foods are more nutritious than others, but some foods are nutritious for your mind or just making you feel good. And for me, that's those feel-good foods like eating chips or having dessert. Like I think it all comes back down to balance and having you know a healthy balance of both. So it got really obsessive for me just around the time of my last to second last year of university you know i would be obsessed with exercising every day and counting how many calories i burnt in the exercise so i wasn't necessarily doing the exercise for the mental health benefits of feeling good i was doing it to burn the number of calories to you know have that energy balance for the day at a negative every single day and i mean like if you're not eating enough nutrition and calories and energy you're gonna feel like shit because your body needs a certain number of calories a day to maintain your metabolism and if you're not eating enough of course you're going to lose weight but on top of that you're not gonna have energy and you're not gonna feel good you're not gonna have the hormones that make you feel good your body's gonna start shutting down some parts of your metabolism or some parts of your body processes so I would be had like very obsessive traits with um, weighing myself really regularly and counting calories on apps and being so obsessed with everything to the, like gram and I mean just even that is just like so time consuming so I find now one of the things that I do to I guess stay away from those tendencies is not having any of those apps on my phone not using them not weighing anything not measuring the amount of calories in a meal not even checking packaging because it's just very triggering and I think it's very, I guess, a bit of a slippery slope. So yeah, that's kind of where I was at. I was the lowest weight I'd been, but yet I'd look in the mirror and, I mean, this is body dysmorphia. You still aren't happy. You're never happy. Even though I could see that I was a low body weight, you know, I was setting unrealistic goals for myself. It wasn't attainable. And I had just so much fear around food and fear around the way that I looked if you're watching this you're probably wanting some tips of how to get through it and what to do if you can acknowledge in yourself that there's an issue I feel like that is such an important step to getting better is realizing there's an issue because it took me many many years to actually admit it and I feel like once I had admit, admitted it I could heal a lot quicker other things that I did which I think immensely helped my journey to recovery one of those was unfollowing accounts on instagram that are particularly triggering and don't bring value to your life so for me that was following girls who had these amazing bikini bodies they're like i guess beautiful insta models that clearly are unattainable and i was com constantly comparing myself to that also unfollowing any accounts that are triggering in the way that they eat if you tend to I guess mimic the way that they eat so there was a couple accounts I'm not gonna name any names but there was a couple accounts that I followed that I think were also suffering similar issues and I could see 
you know, the things that they were eating, you know, cutting out fats, cutting out protein and eating these really low calorie diets based on pretty much just like fruits and vegetables. And that was really triggering because I'd find myself sort of, you know, judging what I was eating and then stripping back things like avocado or nuts and eating a raw cake and then feeling so much guilt about it because of all the high fat foods in it. So yeah, one of the things I did was unfollow those sorts of accounts. I don't need to look at girls who look amazing in a bikini and then just think about, like, look at myself and feel horrible. Like, that's not bringing anything positive to me. So yeah, I guess if there's any accounts that you follow or magazines or TV shows or anything that triggers you, just cut it out. Cut it out of your life. You don't need it. Another thing that I did, which isn't really applicable to a lot of people right now because we can't travel, but I went traveling and I feel like this really rapidly healed me the most out of I feel like out of most things because you know I was overseas traveling and I couldn't control what was in every single meal and for the first few months it was kind of a struggle because you know when you can't control what's in your meal it makes you quite stressed and then you might try to control, control other factors like exercise to balance that I guess after like six to 12 months of living overseas and being in a different environment I began to sort of let that wall down a couple of other big factors that I think play a part in my journey to healing at the height of it I was in my early 20s and now I'm in my late 20s almost 30 and I feel like in your 20s you have so much growing to do so much maturity and I feel like as I've grown up I've just started to accept myself more started to love myself more and just be more comfortable in my own skin because I am a bit older and this is who I am and I've just yeah I just think as you age and mature you just start to learn things about yourself and you start to appreciate yourself and your body another huge factor I think late in my progress has been pregnancy and becoming a mother I was pretty worried and I always thought I'd be like how would I go with pregnancy because you gain lots of weight like would it trigger me would it upset me would I fall into a dark place and I don't know if this is the case for everyone but for me personally I feel like it was a huge sort of hurdle in my recovery I gained a whole new perspective and appreciation for my body and what it's capable of a whole new perspective of life and the meaning and the importance in my life and it wasn't just about me anymore it was about a whole nother life that I was creating and birthing and raising for me I just became so in awe of my body and you know how it grew this baby inside of me and then how I could nourish him through breastfeeding it just gave me a whole new outlook and I'm not saying that's the quick fix go get pregnant have a baby but I just know reflecting on my own journey I can see you know, how monumental that was for me to my journey of self-acceptance I also feel as though Instagram has changed I don't know if you guys think this but like I feel like Instagram has changed a bit since you know 2016 to 20 I guess 18 19 I feel like back then people were much more polished there was a lot more photoshopping there was a lot more um, face tuning people were less real everyone wanted to show their perfect polished life not to say that that doesn't go on now it totally does but people are starting to open up or well, people that I follow anyway are a bit more real and showing their realistic life and their real bodies and maybe it's just some of the accounts I've started to follow recently but more you know girls that are showing real bodies and real insecurities and opening up about mental health issues and I feel like for me that's been really helpful to just yeah see other people and learn from other people who are going through similar things as them in terms of exercise I think that's an interesting one because back back then I exercised to do, burn a certain amount of calories and um I think in the last like two years it flipped for me where it was more like I was exercising to feel good mentally I think when COVID hit and gyms closed and I was doing lots of home workouts with my husband and I was just sort of doing it for that mental health aspect you know going for those walks outside and you know when things opened up again and I could go to Pilates with friends again it was it was for the mental health and now that's completely what I do it for. I'm not doing it for a number on the scales or a number of calories burnt in a day. Like I honestly, like when I go for a run, that's not what I even look at anymore. I know at the height of when I was unwell or really controlling with my habits, I 
you know, I'd run to reach a certain number of calories because that's what I wanted to burn for the day to counteract that I'd eaten, to have the overall negative energy balance. And now I don't even look at that. All I care about is, you know, how did I feel while I was running? What was my pace? How many kilometers did I do? Like, how have I improved from the last month? And yeah, I just feel like I'm in a really good place. And I did say earlier that I feel like it's constantly a journey. And so like talking about like my running journey at the moment and how that's going, that to me shows that it's still, you know, it's still a journey because I'm still thinking about these things and still comparing how I was then to how I am now. And, you know, there is certain times where things might still trigger me. Like I'm not immune to it now. I'm not, I don't think you're ever fully healed. I still have moments of being triggered, you know, if I'm in a change room and I see myself in a reflection at a certain angle, I might, you know, fall into a place of self-loathing of my own body and then I just sort of have to snap myself out of it, you know, leave the change room, snap out of it, get out of that headspace. I feel like in the, my postpartum journey, I, as I was getting weighed every week towards the end of my pregnancy, that I found that a little bit triggering, triggering to see how much you know, because they're constantly documenting how much weight you're gaining. And I can understand how for some people that would be extremely triggering or extremely hard to have to hear that. And I did find towards the end of those months, it was a little bit, I guess, a little bit triggering for my mind. I feel like I'm using that word so much, but it was. And so I can see how it would be hard for some people. And then of course, postpartum, it's not as often, but you know, in your follow up, they might weigh you and see where you're at or after birth I think I remember being like I want to jump on the scales and see how much weight I lost you know after birthing Bowie but then we have scales at home where we might weigh the dog or we weigh Bowie and you know I just have to find myself if I want to jump on and be like where am I at postpartum you know it's six months or it's 12 months and jump on and weigh myself and see and like I'm back to pre-pregnancy weight so that's like you know I'm like oh that's great but I've got to check in on myself regularly and be like is this becoming you know you don't want this to become a path or a new habit of checking so I'm really mindful not to do it often and if I find myself um, thinking about it like you know getting into those tendencies of thinking about weighing myself after a run or first thing in the morning I haven't had food or little things like that I have to rein myself in and go hey maybe don't do that those were old habits and we don't need those now push the scales back under the counter and just don't even jump on them so another big thing for my healing and my journey has been stepping away from labels so back when I started my Instagram and when I started to get I guess in the thick of orthorexia and being obsessed with eating healthy I jumped into veganism and I feel like part of me doing that was a way of me controlling what I ate in social situations so you know often that meant that if I was at a birthday or out with friends you know I didn't have to eat the birthday cake or if there was no food there that was suitable for me you know I could strictly say oh I'm vegan and avoid those foods or bring my own foods so in a way I think that label kind of restrained me a little bit and controlled was just another way of me to control what I ate So part of my healing has actually been stepping away from that label and trying really not to label my diet because I think for me it was a controlling factor. So now over the last couple of years I've kind of started using the term plant-based and now I really try not to use a label because I just find it, I don't know, I just think it was such a control factor for me. So like of course I cook all plant-based recipes, I cook all plant-based at home but you know in social situations or if I'm out traveling or I'm with friends and there's nothing vegan on the menu or you know someone's having a birthday cake I'm just you know I just let myself relax and enjoy food and not obsess over things like that because I think little things like that just it just wasn't good for my mental health personally but yeah that's why you will find that I don't use those labels anymore Um, And I hope if you're watching this, you can understand where I'm coming from. I know not everyone is going to, I guess, find that okay or agree with me. But life is all about finding your own journey and everyone's is different. And what works for someone doesn't work for everyone else. So for me personally, I just don't think putting labels on myself 
really works for me and I'm just in such a happier place when I don't put a label on myself and I can just enjoy food that's not to say I go out and eat meat and seafood I'm just saying like when I'm eat out and there's only something vegetarian on the menu that's probably what I'll eat and yeah just try not to feel guilty about what I am eating because I think that just sort of puts me back into those dark places of guilt so where I'm at now with how I eat I guess like the whole intuitive eating mindful eating is like kind of like trendy right now but like I don't know if people practicing it always are practicing it but I honestly I'm in such a good healthy place with my diet I don't count calories I don't think about foods I'm eating I'm eating um, I don't overly plan my meals I don't feel guilt most importantly after meals so you know if I go on the weekend and we go out to dinner and breakfast lots of cocktails maybe some pastries or some dessert I'm not I don't feel guilty about it I just honestly don't I feel happy and good because I know that majority of the time when I'm at home or um, yeah when I'm at home I'm cooking my own meals and they're really wholesome and then when it's the weekend and I want to go out and have burgers and fries and you know lots of cocktails or not really lots of cocktails but have a few cocktails with my friends like I can do all these things and back then I would have been like so terrified that by going out and having a burger and chips and cocktails like that that amount of calories would make me you know put on so much weight just from that like one meal which is just so crazy like so crazy and now that I'm in this place where I'm comfortable and free to eat what I want when I want you know I, I'm not thinking about it so much so I feel like when you're in a place of so much deprivation all you're thinking about is food and what snack and how many calories you've eaten how many calories you've burnt and like what you ate today and you're so consumed by it that it's so bloody exhausting and then I find you're just thinking about food so much and then you can't stop thinking about when you like what snack you're gonna have next whereas now I'm just sort of like going by my day and then I'm like oh it's breakfast time I'm hungry what should I have I'll cook this and then it gets to lunch and I'm like I'm not like thinking for the next three hours about what's my next meal gonna be how many calories is that gonna be you know counting it down and writing like I'm not doing any of those things I'm just like oh I'm hungry what should I have so I don't know if it's like intuitive eating mindful eating but I'm just like I feel like I'm just free I'm liberated and I'm free and I just eat when I'm hungry eat what I want and just love food <laughs> my average host is going soggy I've been talking for like half an hour I hope this has been helpful for some of you as I said before it's a journey it's a lifelong journey I honestly believe and there are so many other people going through these struggles so if you're one of those people I'm here with you and I just hope that my channel can be a safe space for you where you're not triggered I really hope that and where you can I guess learn to eat wholesomely but learn to also enjoy life and have balance I'm gonna eat my breakfast and then I gotta go to work and then it's pretty much lunchtime honestly I feel like I'll get to work and I'll probably order lunch because when I run I get so hungry and I literally have to just like eat all day which is why I don't do it every day because then I would just be hungry all the time and yeah I'll see you guys soon me again in the car about to get lunch it's three so I had a late breakfast so I'm having a late lunch I craved a burger all weekend didn't have one and I am so hungry right now so I'm fulfilling that craving and getting a burger I didn't know where to get one from nearby where we live slash where our office is so I'm down in Nobby Beach getting grilled because they actually have a new mushroom burger patty and it's using that fable mushroom meat that I love and I've been wanting to try it so I've come here and I'm gonna get takeaway take it home and have it so I can see Bowie cuz I miss him Mondays are like should be organized back at work because we go to work on Mondays and like we totally by now should be organized to pack lunch or have food but I just find by Monday like our Marley spoon order comes Monday and I do my grocery shopping on Monday 
with my assistant Amanda because we plan the recipes that I'm going to trial this week. So I'm working on my next cookbook and I'm going to vlog this week a few days of working on that because it's getting to like the crunch time where I need to be like doing a lot more recipes and a lot more work for it. So I think I'm going to vlog for you guys a few days of work on that so you can see sort of the behind the scenes of a week or a few days working on that. Anyway, where was I going with that tangent? Oh yes. So we do our grocery shopping on Monday because then we plan the recipes I'm going to trial that week. So we go over the recipes, ingredients and do the grocery shopping. So again, I'm still on tangent, but what I was trying to say is I should be organized on Mondays and like pack lunch, but I never am. So I feel like Mondays kind of like the weekend like extends and we end up getting a bit of takeaway um, and we always cook a Miley Spoon meal for dinner. So the point of that story was that I'm here getting a burger and I can't wait. It's going to be delicious and I will show you guys when I get it. I have secured the goods. I've also made a dire mistake because I didn't order sauce for my chips because oh, I thought I had because I know I've got tomato sauce at home in the fridge except that means I have to wait the whole drive home to eat my chippies what a mistake I was gonna eat them on the drive no anyway they get home I am hungry so I ended up getting the new fable patty and I got this is the patty here. And I got the cheeseburger and made it vegan because I didn't like love pickles. So anyway, let's review it, Odie. I feel like I'm being watched. Ooh, what's going on here? Onion, sauce, mustard, pickles, cheese. Already I know I would have added lettuce and tomato next time because I always add that to my Beyond cheeseburger that I get from there. I'm really just all about a burger but I do want some tomato and lettuce it just adds like a crisp fresh element do you want a bite you don't want a bite what about a pickle do you want some pickle <laughs> it's like I don't know about that pickle ta ta oh <sighs> Mm -hmm. Do you want some more? Oh, that's my burger! No! Alright. <laughs> it's a wrap of that, isn't it? Crazy. Bowie's dinner. Not that we're filming what Bowie eats in a day, but this is his dinner and he hates food ATMs, so I don't know if he'll even eat any of it. But we're going to try. Yeah, we love food. Positive thinking. Yum, 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 yum. Alright, what's cooking? This is what we're having for dinner tonight. Do do. It's a Miley Spoon cauliflower dish with, it's got vegan feta, smoky maple roast. <laughs> roast. Looks good. Anyway, we'll see how it turns out. So Alex cooked tonight. Just need the cauliflower. This is the Greek style feta. I like this brand. It's yummy. One of my many dishes I just created. Did you? You just whip this one up, did you? That's the crispy cauliflower, which looks yum. And what else have we got, Alex? Talk us through it. <laughs> he has no idea. That no, no, looks yum. I needed something. Quinoa. Quinoa. Um, Peters. Corn. Okay. That is it. Yum. It looks so good. P.S. I'm watching a documentary on Lady Di. I listened to a podcast. It's called You Were Wrong About. And they did a five part podcast deep dive into Lady Diana. And it was so good. And now I'm watching a documentary on her. And then my friend Haley's trying to make me watch The Crown. So I think that's next. Also, this salad is Delicious. phenomenal. Yeah, it's amazing, huh? Like. Mm -hmm.